Hello, everybody, and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. For today's preview, it's England take on France at Twickenham this weekend in a very big clash for both teams, but for very different reasons. For France, still very much in the Six Nations hunt. They are five points behind Wales, and they will play against Wales next weekend. That whole uh, match against Scotland is sort of, the, if they can go ahead again, then France will have a big opportunity to try and push the Six Nations, but they will need to get over um, or past England this weekend. For England, it's a very big match in terms of trying to you know, prove a point to a lot of the naysayers, a lot of the pundits, a lot of the criticism that they've had over the last few weeks. They are virtually out of the Six Nations contention. You know, eight points behind the lead at the moment, with France still having a game in hand, Scotland still having a game in hand. So they were to beat France, were they, were they to be handed a default win, they would then go above England as well. So it's been a very disappointing um, campaign for England, who at this stage could risk finishing in the bottom three. Um, which, you know, for a team which, which won the Six Nations a couple of months ago, is pretty poor. And this is why this weekend's a big opportunity against France, arguably the best side in the competition, definitely them in Wales, for England to be able to back their main guns, the likes of Moritoja, Owen Farrell, these players who have come under a lot of criticism because, you know, with the Saracens having been relegated and not playing enough rugby, and not playing any rugby at the moment, only just made a return. And as a result, you know, Eddie Jones had to back a lot of the players in the squad who are Saracens players, um, who haven't had a lot of game time. And a lot of fans and, and pundits saying that, you know, he was wrong to back them. He should have and picked players who were playing because they are more sort of up to up to scratch and, um, and you know, are more sh are sharper and, and on form, you know. And I think that's, it's, it's definitely an argument which has a lot of merit, but it becomes difficult. How do you, how do you justify dropping Mori Toji, Owen Farrell, players who have been so good for you for so long? So it's such a tricky balance. You know, you can understand the sort of both, both um, arguments there. Um, before we look at the team lines, please do subscribe to the channel, smash like on the video as well. Jump in the comments. Let me know what you think in terms of score predictions, which battles, individual battles are you looking forward to seeing, which players can't you wait to see, what do you think is going to happen in this game. In terms of the teams, for England, a first start for Max Mallins. He comes into the side in place of Elliot Daly. Luke Cowan Dickey comes in place of Jamie George. A fantastic battle between those two for the starting lineup. Literally every week, you know, changing and and both players really pushing each other to the to the to the edges of their ability, trying to sort of knuckle down and 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 keep that number two jersey every week. So it's fantastic to have that sort of depth and to be in a position where you've got two players continuously pushing each other for spots because it just brings out the best in them. And um, the other change sees um, Charlie Eels come in at number five. Um, so yeah, if you look at the England side, um, Vinopola and Carl Sinclair are the two. Um, props, which, I mean, they've been fantastic since coming back. And Mario Toja keeps his place next to Charlie Eels. Um, Mark Wilson, Tom Curry, and Billy Vinopola are the loose trio. Very good loose trio there. Um, Tom Curry playing some fantastic rugby. And Vinopola has been improving with every game, to be fair to him. Ben Youngs, George Ford, like, very good combination there. So they'll reunite there. And then Owen Farrell, captain the side inside centre with Henry Slade. The two what, um, wings are Johnny May and Anthony Watson. Then on the bench, Jamie George, Ellis Genge, Will Stewart, Johnny Hill, Ben Earl, Dan Robson, Ollie Lawrence, and of course, Elliot Daly, who drops to the bench after the first three games. Um, so it's a very good England side on paper, but there are a lot of players here who are not playing to their usual stand, and I think that's something that they need to prove this weekend. The likes of Mario Toje particularly um, has a big point to prove in terms of, of, of justifying continuously being backed by Eddie Jones. He's been fantastic for so many years, but he has been pretty poor so far in the Six Nations tournament. And this is an opportunity against a very good um, French pack to try and make a statement. For France, a return in the midfield for Virumi Vakatawa. He comes back in um, for the first game of the season. He missed the first couple um, with a knee injury. Returned last weekend um, for racing in, in, the, in the top 14 and has now come straight into the starting line for France in place of Arthur Vincent, who is injured. Um, Teddy Thomas comes onto the wing, which sees Damien Pinot uh, move to the number 11 jersey. And then in the pack, we've got Ramon um, Tofano. He comes in in place of Bernard Leroux, has been ruled out of the clash. So in terms of the, the French side, not too many changes. Um, we've got Cyril Bale there, Julien Marchand, Mohamed Hawass, Roman Tafana is comes in. He partners Paul Willemser, very good defensive there. And um, Dylan Creighton is in as well, ahead of Anthony Jalon, who drops to the bench. Charles Olivan captains the side. Gregory Aldred, who I thought was fantastic. He's been fantastic the entire Six Nations. Really is one of the standout number eights in the world at the moment. Antoine Dupont, we've run out of superlatives to describe his effect on the game. Probably the most informed player in world rugby. He's probably right now, if you had to right now name the best player in world rugby, it's probably going to be... Um, Anton Dupont. Uh, Mathieu Zellaber has been getting his opportunities and, and taking them with both hands. He's been very, very good. Um, Gail Fiku has been fantastic in the midfield. Um, Fakatawa will hopefully um, get up to scratch quite quickly. And then Bryce Julian, you know, had a man of the match performance last time with French ran out. He was brilliant. 
Um, and for somebody who's had a bit of a limited test career, um, really good to see him playing some of his best rugby. And then on the bench, a lot of usual suspects in Kamal Shah, uh, Jean Baptiste Gross, Darian Aldri, Silkabo, Cameron Wocky, Anthony Jalanch, Baptiste Sedan, and Romain Intermac will be provide support off the bench there. So it's a very good French side as well. And I think that um, on paper, in terms of the performances that we've seen in, in the Six Nations so far, you've got to back the French side. They play such exciting rugby. You know, you've got something like Anton Dupont. You just can't do anything wrong at the moment. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a pack that really has been very dominant. Their defense was superb against Ireland a couple of weeks ago, um, almost a month ago, I suppose. And that really was sort of the big difference. And, you know, even when they, if their attack isn't always coming off, they, like, they do like to try things, but that defense is, it just gives them such a big platform to try and put pressure on, their, on, their other, on the opposition teams and to really sort of um, just bully them, really. And I think, you know, to try and bully a, a side coach by Eddie Jones is always going to be a bit difficult. And it's going to be a very good... Um, battle up front and I think particularly the front row battle and I think the loose trio battle will be very interesting you know um, even the lock battle I think will be quite quite interesting so set pieces will be very important this weekend um, and then I'm really hoping that we're going to see both back lines really you know, throw caution to the wind throw the ball around and try and play some some attacking rugby we've got some nice conditions in London in the last couple of days um, looks like it could be nice and dry and could be um, really sort of set up for a nice attacking game. Let me know what you think is going to happen in the comments below. Smash like on the video. As I said, please do subscribe. My name is Steven, and I'll chat to you very soon.